Here is your latest African news. Southern Africa Southern African countries agreed to push for a lift on international ivory trade. Zimbabwe, Botswana, Zambia, Tanzania and Namibia are teaming up to legalize the international trade in ivory, which has been banned for decades. The Southern African countries signed the Weng Declaration, a treaty pushing for the opening of ivory sales, and was set to push for the adoption of the treaty at the 19th Conference of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species to be held in Panama in November. The countries all attended the African Elephant Conference in Weng National Park, where the agreement was reached. Weng National Park is is also part of the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area, which brings together the wildlife population of Botswana, Namibia, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. South Africa Ramaphosa to appoint new team on black empowerment. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has said he will appoint a council during the week to advise on broad based black economic empowerment. The body is being established because of inadequate progress in some measures of improving black involvement in the economy almost three decades after the end of apartheid. Ramaphosa said this in his weekly letter to the nation. Ramaphosa highlighted black management control, broadening procurement and skills development as areas that need attention. The president also added that economic transformation and economic growth are intertwined and there cannot be one without the other. East Africa Democratic Republic of Congo citizens in Goma welcome government sanctions against Rwanda. The decision by Congo to cut ties with Rwanda has elicited mixed reactions. King Shasa on 27th May halted all Rwanda air flights from the country, alleging Kigali's involvement in supporting the M23 rebel group in the eastern part of the vast nation. Rwanda Defense Forces later said two soldiers had been kidnapped on patrol and were being held by the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, another rebel group active in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. King Shasa has regularly accused Rwanda of carrying out incursions into its territories and of backing armed groups there. More than 120 armed groups roam volatile Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, many of which are a legacy of regional wars more than two decades ago. Relations began to thaw after Democratic Republic of Congo President Felix Tshisekedi took office in 2019, but the recent resurgence of M23 violence has reignited tensions. The militia group briefly captured North Kivu's provincial capital Goma in late 2012 before the army quelled the rebellion the following year. Africa wide. AU calls for dialogue over rising Rwanda DR Congo tensions. African Union Chair Makisal has called for calm and dialogue between the Democratic Republic of Congo DRC and Rwanda after both sides accuse the other of supporting rebel groups operating along their shared border. Rwanda has claimed that two of its soldiers were being held captive after being abducted by rebels in the DRC, accusing the country's authorities of supporting them. The statement comes after the DRC summoned Rwanda's ambassador and accused its neighbor of supporting the M23 rebel group active in its eastern region. According to the Rwandan Defense Forces, RDF, the two soldiers were abducted during a patrol and are being held in the eastern part of DRC by rebels of the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, FDLR. The incident follows an attack along the border of Congolese forces and FDLR rebels, according to the Rwandan army. Fighting between Congolese forces and the M23 has broken out on several fronts in North Kivu, a war-torn eastern province of the DRC bordering Rwanda. Kinshasa says the M23, one of more than 100 armed groups operating in eastern DRC, mainly made up of Congolese Tutsis, is backed by Rwanda but Kigali has denied any involvement. On May 28, Congolese authorities decided to suspend flights by Rwanda. The DRC and Rwanda have had tense relations since the mass arrival in eastern Congo of Rwandan Hutus accused of massacring Tutsis during the 1994 Rwandan Tutsi genocide, while Kinshasa has also regularly accused Rwanda of conducting incursions into its territory and supporting armed groups there. Relations had begun to thaw after the election of Congolese President Felix Tshisekedi in 2019, but the resurgence of M23 attacks has recently reignited bilateral tensions. Malawi Malawi slashes the value of its currency. 
the authorities in Malawi have announced a 25% devaluation of the local currency, the kwacha. The announcement has come when Malawi is in the middle of negotiations with the International Monetary Fund IMF to determine the details of a new financial assistance program. To secure backing, the government has been asked to make adjustments to its economic policies, but Central Bank Chief Wilson Banda says the decision to devalue the local currency has not been forced on the country by the international lending institution. Mr. Banda told the media in the southern city of Blantyre that the local currency had been devalued to allow the market to determine the exchange rate. Kenya. Racist Nairobi club wants white patrons over Africans. A video circulating across social media has shown Nairobi nightclubs blatantly discriminating against African clients. The club located in one of Nairobi's suburbs named Alchemist has come under fire as a video that circulated on social media showed bouncers at the club redirecting and separating queues according to races. The video went ahead to show the club's bouncers separating and refusing to admit African revelers giving preference to white and Indian clients who in turn had their own special queue. In the video, the final blow came when a black man sported in a white t-shirt was seen joining the exclusive line but was immediately signaled by the bouncer at the entrance to get back and join his fellows on the other line. This is not the first time the bar is accused of racism. Earlier, a customer alleged that she was denied a sitting place as it was reserved for white people. While some wondered why such things are still happening in this day and age, others noted that racial discrimination is common in the club. The club has since issued an apology saying it regretted the action. However, Kenyans could hear none of the apologies with many in social media boycotting and calling for the immediate closure of the establishment. South Sudan South Sudan slams UN arms embargo renewal South Sudan's unity government has described the recent renewal of arm embargoes and sanctions by the United Nations Security Council as unproductive. The Security Council voted to renew the sanctions amid unrest in the country. In a press statement, South Sudan's Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Ministry say the Security Council should have followed the African Union position. The statement added that the African people have spoken clearly through the African Union decision 815 of February 2022 that sanctions and arm embargoes are unproductive and that some countries would dismiss the African Union stance on this matter shows an old hubris with no value for a world shaken by wars including Africa and Europe. South Africa Unemployment rate falls in the country South Africa's statistic agency, SA has announced a drop in the unemployment rate, the first drop in nearly two years. According to a statement from the government agency, 370,000 jobs have been created between the fourth quarter of 2021 and the first quarter of 2022. The country was hit hard by the pandemic and since July 2020, the number of unemployed people has been rising steadily. The continent's leading industrial power now has 14.9 million workers out of a population of nearly 60 million. The number of unemployed people fell by 60,000 from the previous quarter to 7.9 million. The unemployment rate now stands at 34.5%. Job creation benefited communities and social services, manufacturing and trade sectors. Finance, construction and agriculture continued to lose jobs. Earlier this year, tensions flared against foreign workers. The number of unemployed young people 15 to 34 years old decreased by 0.5%. 0.1% compared to the end of last year to 4.7 million. Egypt. Egypt unveils major find of 250 sarcophagi and 150 statues in Saqqara. Egypt has unveiled a major new archaeological find of 250 sarcophagi, 150 small bronze statues of gods and goddesses, and other antiquities at the Saqqara necropolis. According to the country's antiquities authorities, the artifacts were recently unearthed at the famed necropolis of Saqqara near Cairo. The artifacts were showcased at a makeshift exhibit at the feet of the Steppe Pyramid of Jose in Saqqara, 24 kilometers, that's 15 miles southwest of the Egyptian capital. The artifacts will be transferred for a permanent exhibit at the new Grand Egyptian Museum, a mega project still under construction near the famed Giza Pyramids just outside Cairo. 
The Saqqara site is part of a sprawling necropolis at Egypt's ancient capital of Memphis that includes the Giza pyramids and the smaller pyramids at Abu Sir, Dashur, and Abu Ruwaysh. The ruins of Memphis have designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in the 1970s. Egypt has been heavily promoting recent archaeological finds, hoping to attract more tourists to the country. Sudan. Hundreds demonstrate against the UN in Sudan. Hundreds of Sudanese protesters rallied in front of the United Nations mission in the capital Khartoum to call for its dismissal. The protesters included supporters of Islamist groups critical of efforts by UN envoy Volker Pathas to resolve the political crisis in the country since last year's military coup. The rallies came as the UN Security Council is considering extending the mission's mandate beyond June 3rd. Many accused the envoy of interfering in Sudan's internal affairs. The UN mission, along with the African Union and regional bloc IGAD, have been pushing to facilitate Sudanese-led talks to resolve the crisis. On 31st May, military leader Abdel Fattah al-Burhan lifted the state of emergency imposed since the coup to set the stage for meaningful dialogue that achieves stability for the transitional period. The decision came after a meeting with senior military officials that also recommended that people detained under an emergency law be freed. Rwanda Asylum seekers at an immigration detention center in the UK say they went on hunger strike after being told they would be deported to Rwanda. 17 asylum seekers at Brookhouse Detention Center near Gatwick Airport, Sussex, have told the BBC of an atmosphere of distress and despair among detainees. In April, the government announced plans to send some asylum seekers to Rwanda. Charities that support asylum seekers say they are documenting a number of suicide attempts among those threatened with being sent to Rwanda. The news comes as the Home Secretary, Preeti Patel, has announced that the first group of asylum seekers who entered the UK without authorization will be deported to Rwanda on 14th June. The measure to fly these asylum seekers 4,500 miles, that is 7,240 kilometers to Rwanda, is part of a 120 million euro, that's 151 million US dollars deal with the East African nation. Africa wide. APRO as the UK excludes graduates from African universities and new visa rules. Britain will offer work visas to graduates from the world's best universities in an expansion of its post Brexit immigration system that is designed to attract the best and brightest workers. But no African universities are included in the list of eligible institutions. Under the scheme, graduates with a bachelor's or master's degree from the top 50 universities abroad can apply for a two-year work visa and will be allowed to bring family members with them. Those who receive doctorates can apply for a three-year visa. The most recent list of eligible universities from 2021, published online by the UK government, comprises more than two dozen US universities, as well as institutions in Canada, Japan, Germany, China, Singapore, France, and Sweden. No African university is on the latest eligibility list, nor on lists for previous years. The decision to exclude graduates from African universities has been criticized. This is highly due to the fact that Africa holds many of the world's best-rated higher learning institutions like University of Cape Town and Stellenbosch University, University of Ibadan, University of Nairobi, and many more which are the world's top-rated universities. However, none of them are listed in the top 50 or 100 rankings of the top global rating agencies. Some critics have come forward condemning the action, with some stating that the exclusion of an entire continent brimming over with enormous creative and intellectual energies of its youth on the basis of its absence from arbitrary, culturally biased, abuse-prone university rankings is short-sighted as several unranked African universities have produced and continue to produce some of the brightest minds in the world. East Africa Democratic Republic of Congo agrees to free detained Rwandan soldiers. 
the Democratic Republic of Congo will release two detained Rwandan soldiers as a step towards easing growing tensions between the two countries. Angola has announced following efforts to mediate between the two countries. Rwanda had earlier claimed the two soldiers were abducted as they patrolled the country's border with DRCs following conflict near the area, but Kinshasa had insisted that two soldiers were captured and detained for trespassing into Congo territory. Tension has been building up between Democratic Republic of Congo and Rwanda following accusations of supporting rebels. Kinshasa accused Kigali of supporting the M23 rebel group that has been recently engaged in fighting with government forces, a claim that Kigali denied, while Rwanda also accused the DRC of supporting the FDLR rebels hostile to Kigali. Democratic Republic of Congo President Felix Tshisekedi traveled to Angola recently for talks on the DRC Rwanda tension following a suggestion by African Union Chairman Maki Sal. The Angolan President Jao Lorenko mediated in the Congo Rwanda issue. Lorenko chairs the International Conference in the Great Lakes region. Africa wide. Africa objects to U.S. proposals on controversial IHR WHO amendments. In a rare show of African power and solidarity, several African member states have objected to proposed international health regulation amendments discussed at the World Health Assembly 75 this week, a move many believe might shake up the World Health Organization's dominance. The resolution on IHR amendments was not passed at the WHA as African countries were concerned that there was inadequate consultation amongst member states and the process was being rushed. Botswana read this in a statement on behalf of the 47 Afro members. The United States government proposed 13 controversial IHR amendments which give the WHO DG Tedros unilateral power to declare actual or potential health emergencies and expect a response in 48 hours. The draft proposal yet to be formally decided also aims to change Article 59 of the IHR and would accelerate the implementation of future amendments. The African hashtag WHA75 delegation expressed reservations about these IHR amendments, saying all reforms should be tackled together as part of a holistic package at a later stage. Nigeria Nigeria's largest city enforces ban on motorbike taxis. Enforcement of the ban on motorcycle taxis, Okada, in Lagos, Nigeria, has begun. The clampdown follows the gruesome murder of a 38-year-old man suspected to have been killed by some Okada taxi riders during a disagreement of a fair on May 12th. Riders who flout the ban will be arrested and have their motorbikes seized, Nigerian authorities have said. Lagos State Governor Babajid Sanwo Olu described the taxi riders as a threat to road users citing surging crime and road accidents. The taxis are a preferred means of transport because they are faster in weaving through the city's vehicular traffic jams. A large number of young people in the state make a living as motorbike taxi riders and the ban is bound to face a backlash. The authorities deployed security personnel and armored personnel carriers in the city amid fears of possible violent protest. This ban is the second in over two years. It is still not clear if the ban, which does not include delivery motorcycles, ride-hailing startups such as Oride, Gokada and Max and G, which have sought to capitalize on the city's teeming population of just over 20 million people to expand their businesses. Diaspora Haitians tell France to return debt money. A feeling of jubilation is running through many Haitians. Some are demanding that France repay Haiti back in the weeks since the New York Times published its ransom project about forced payments Haiti made to its former colonizer post-independence. Much of this debt to France has been termed as a legacy of one of the greatest heists in history and Haitians are now demanding it back. Surrounded by French gunboats, a newly independent Haiti was forced to pay its slaveholders reparations. Haitians compensated their oppressors and their oppressors' descendants for the privilege of being free. It took Haiti more than a century to pay the reparation debts off. Haiti, then known as Saint Domingue, had been the crown jewel of the French Empire. It was the most lucrative colony in the whole world. French planters forced African slaves to produce sugar, 
coffee and other cash crops for the global market. In 1791, the slaves revolted against this French system in what became the world's largest and most successful slave revolt and against all odds the slaves won. Former slaves sent slaveholders carrying to France and America and Haitians successfully fought back subsequent efforts to re-enslave them. Haiti was the first nation to permanently ban slavery. Debt payments starting in 1825 have been estimated to cost Haiti 21 billion US dollars. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.